Hey guys, welcome to my channel and I'm back again with another really interesting video guys. In this video, as you can see on my screen, we are going to learn how you can return a structured output from a large language model with the help of an amazing tool that I have discovered, which is Grok. So without taking any time further, let's get started. So first of all, guys, let's understand what is the structured output. So obviously, guys, if you have seen my videos and you have experimented yourself with something called as chat GPT, you know that basically if you send a question to your large language model, it usually returns you a summarized text or an elaborated text based upon the query, right? So for example, if I ask a large language model, oh, uh, uh, so for example, if I large, ask a large language model, okay, what is, what is hugging face, right? It is going to give me a description of what is hugging face, is it a company and whatever it does and blah, 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 right? It is going to be a simple paragraph, right? But we don't work with paragraphs in general in case of software engineering, right? We work with APIs, we work with microservices and what do microservices consume? They consume a structured input. And that structured input is usually your JSON input, right? So we want our large language model to return us a response which has a certain structure to it. And with the help of this tool called as Grok, you can actually run large language models and you can return a structured output from it. So you can ask it a query and it is going to return the response to you, but in a proper JSON. And uh, that proper JSON also you can define what all parameters you want in that JSON. So isn't that amazing guys. So we are going to run this collab notebook and we will see how we can actually achieve this. But before I start with this, I need to give you a small introduction of what is actually Grok. So if we go to the official website of Grok, right, they will give you a question why Grok and what it is exactly. So just to build up the uh, preface here guys, Grok is a inf AI inference technology. What is the inference technology guys? So inference, just think of it that in that manner that it is basically an end point, an inference end point where you just send a query and it is going to take your query, process it to a large language model and return you the response. So basically taking your query, processing it, and returning the response to you, that is your inference, okay? So Grok is the fastest AI inference technology. So if you ask Grok a question, it is going to return the response to a large language model in the shortest time possible. And you can actually explore that with a playground that they have provided to you. So if I ask this user something like, what is uh, Tesla, okay? Let's say this is my question, right? And I click on submit here. So you can see that it immediately prints a response to me. And not only that, it actually is going to show me that the inference is 449 milliseconds and the number of tokens is 942. So it actually processed these many tokens in a short time, which is only 449 milliseconds, right? So you can see already how powerful this technology is. Now the question could be, why do we need Grok? And the answer is the most important problem right now with the large language models is uh, latency, right? As the size of your model is growing, it needs more and more computation and memory to actually, you know, get the response and give it to you. So you need to reduce the latency. To reduce the latency, you either have to rely on something like OpenAI or something like Google Gemini, get their APIs, uh, and then you can actually achieve a lower latency. Or if you want to use open source models and you don't want to set up your own servers, you can actually rely on something called as Grok, which allows you to use open source models like Llama, like Mistral, and then uh, generate response from it in a very fast in a very high performance way. Now, the question comes in Grok, how is it able to get these responses so fast? What it is actually doing, which makes it so powerful? And the answer for that is LPU, which is the language processing unit. So you guys might have heard of something called as CPU units, 
you have heard of something called as GPU units. But Grok actually works on something called as LPU unit, which is a language processing unit. Okay. And it is a hardware and a software platform which has an exceptional compute and speed uh, quality, right? And this increases your energy efficiency, this increases your speed quality. And uh, this new type of technology actually, uh, you know, allows for us to use sequential tasks, right? So for example, in a machine uh, learning, not a machine learning, but in a large language model processing, we are actually doing sequential tasks, right? We are processing token after token after token. We are generating a word after a word after a word. So uh, LPU can perform these sequential tasks very, very fast because it makes your compute and your energy much more efficient. So that's why this technology is perfect for text generation or for uh, text summarization or any large language model uh, task because it can predict the next word much, much faster. Okay. If you want to actually read more about it, you can, you know, click on this button here and you can write, read their white paper also. How is it actually doing? And uh, or you can just read this uh, this page also where they have mentioned that the LPU is designed to overcome two of the bottlenecks that we actually get when you are using an LLM. And the two bottlenecks are basically your compute density and your memory bandwidth, right? Because you want computational power, but at the same time, you want huge memory as well. Now, in a language processing unit, it has got a very high compute capacity. That's what I told you, right? It has got an exceptional compute capacity, which is much higher than any CPU or GPU. And because it has got a larger compute capacity, that is why it takes much less time to calculate any word and it takes lesser memory also. So you don't need to have external memory because you are, you know, computing uh, a lot of words together or you are doing a lot of compute which which needs a lot of things in the memory at a single point of time so you kind of reduce that memory uh, memory part because the computation is so so fast it just predicts the word just like that right so it doesn't need to hold the entire context in memory and you can just you know proceed forward to the next uh, next word so it performs much better as compared to GPU and definitely as compared to CPU. Now, uh, also one of the questions that is going to come here is that can I use a language processing unit in Grok for machine learning training? Okay, because obviously you can use Grok for inference endpoints. So you can use it to uh, get your queries processed. But for now, you cannot use Grok to actually train your models. So that is a thing that's not yet available. Maybe in future we will get that. And if we get that, this is going to be really revolutionary because imagine training your model at such high speed, such low latency can actually change the AI game forever. So it's not yet available, unfortunately, but it still enables us to create high performance, low latency machine learning generative AI applications uh, with the help of Grok. Okay. So now that we know what is Grok and why is it so good in performance, it is time for us to actually jump onto the actual topic of this video, which is your structured output. Okay. So. First of all, guys, if you want to have this uh, using, if you want to use Grok in your application, you need to install Grok, right? So you need to have a pip install Grok. And then uh, because we are using a instructor package here, we want to generate a, a JSON response. You need a instructor as well. You need Pydantic also. Why do we need Pydantic? You need Pydantic. Basically, it is a Python module which gives you classes that can define the structure of your JSON. Okay, so you need Pydantic, you need instructor for creating the instructions uh, for loading the instruction model. Also, you need Grok for actually the inference endpoint and you need something called as Anthropic also, which I am not sure why uh, we have to use. But this is a package that has been actually uh, given to us in the Grok documentation. So I would actually, uh, you know, 
I would actually recommend to use this. But if any one of you guys know why Entropic is being used, please feel free to uh, let us know in the comment section below. And then uh, guys, because we are using a Google Colab, so you need to have uh, your Grok key inside your secrets. So you can see this small secrets button here. My Grok key is mentioned here. That's my Grok API key. And to load that API key, I am using something called as user data from Google Colab. Now the next question is going to come from you guys is how did I actually get this API key? So guys, if you go to the Google, uh, sorry, Grok Cloud Playground, you will see a button here which is called as API keys. And you can actually uh, create your own uh, Grok key here. You can see that mine is Hugging Face Collab. That's the name. Obviously, this is um, hidden for now. So you can create your own key and then you can uh, paste that key in your secrets here. And then you can use that key in your code. Okay. So now going to the actual code. So you can see that we have just imported our operating system, which we actually don't need. So I probably don't need this import because earlier I was importing the Grok API key from the environment. But now we are not going to load it from the environment. We will be loading it from the user data. This probably is not needed. Then, as I told you, we are using Pydentic to create the uh, Python classes that we are going to use to uh, define our JSON structure. Then we have got something called as list. Then we have got the Grok package. package. We have got the instructor package. Okay. So first thing first, we have to define what fields do you want in your JSON. So the first thing is that we will create a character class that is uh, importing the base model class. Uh, so obviously we are going to get like a string sort of output. But you can name your class anything, right? This is your own class that you are creating. Just make sure that it imports the base model. Then uh, what all attributes I want. So basically I want the name of the entity. So whatever thing I am trying to query about, I want the name of that quantity. Then uh, I may be querying some facts about that entity. And I want all those facts to be uh, listed in a list. So this is a list of strings and this list of strings will each uh, have so in this list uh, each and every item is basically a field and uh, this field is going to have a description which is a list of facts about the subject okay so uh, fact is basically a list of string and this list is a field which basically says that uh, uh, it is a list of facts about the subject but obviously guys, in this field, you can choose not to place anything. You can just define it as a description. But if you want this field to have something specific, you can actually mention that as well. Uh, any, some sort of configuration if you want to do it, but you can mention that in this field class. Uh, but for now, let's keep it very, very simple guys. And then next point is loading our Grok client. So client becomes equals to grok and then you just pass here the API key that I am getting from my user data. Okay. Now it is time to have my instructor loaded. So my client is going to be a instructor from grok and I'm going to pass my original client here which had the API key and then I'm going to make the mode as the instructor mode tools. So all these steps are necessary if you want a structured output, right? So you need to have a uh, instructor client basically loaded. And then finally, when you have your client, then we will go to client.chatcompletions.create. So chat completion is basically guys, it is sort of a uh, function that takes a list of messages and then it generates a response. So it is basically completing your chat as you get a query from it, right? So this client.chatcompletions.create takes few arguments. This function takes few arguments and then it generates a response. First argument is the model. So you can see that here I have defined the Lama 3 8 billion parameter model and I have commented the mixtural model here, but you can define any model. 
Now the question would be where can I actually get the models I can use, right? So if you go to Grok Cloud and click on documentation, you will see uh, models here and you can copy the name of any or you can copy any model ID and then you can use that uh, model ID in your uh, Google Collab here. So you can use any of the model ID in your model, right? And then because this is a chart completion, you have to specify the list of messages that you want to complete in your chart. So the first message I am providing is that I am a user who basically sent a query that will go into the content. And the query is, tell me about the company Tesla. Okay. Now, the last argument is your response model, which is very important, guys, because you need to have a structured response. So you need to find out if my response uh, is uh, structured into, you need to specify if your uh, response is structured into a uh, character response. So here you have specified the character class, which you have defined here, right? And finally, when you get the response, you just want to do response.model.json and you are just, uh, you know, formatting the JSON here with the intent to and you are printing it, right? So now let's run this code and let's see what we get as a response. So you can see that it actually told me that tell me about the company Tesla. It also it gave me Elon Musk and it gave me fact one and fact two, right? That's not a good response. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the model here and I'm going to go with my mixtral model. Okay. And I'm going to uh, change the response here. I'm going to use the mixtral model and let's wrap it up in your quotes okay now and also guys let's say i not only want the name of the company i also want the year of the company right so let me also uh, give another field which is year and this year is also a string and now i say tell me about the company tesla and the year it was uh, it was s established right let me move the column from here okay and then now let's run this code right let's run this so now you can see that it not only gave me the name of the company it gave me the year also and it is exactly populated in the year field and then it is giving me some facts which is you know electric vehicle clean up energy company founded by Elon Musk blah 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 right so you see here the power of Grok, right? How fast it was. It gave you a structured uh, JSON output. And based upon the question that you have asked, it automatically figured out which field that response should go into. And it actually populated that field for you. And it showed you the response. Okay. So there you go, guys. You can see how easy it is to use Grok. There are many other different models uh, that are available in Grok for you to use. Uh, one such model is also the Whisper model. So you can actually do speech to text with the help of Grok as well, which I have not yet discovered. Uh, sorry, I have not yet experimented with. So this is something I'll be looking forward to do in the future. But I just wanted to introduce you guys to uh, this uh, amazing tool and how you can actually generate structured output with it. So now you can use this uh, to actually create applications or create liaisons with your microservices as well. Okay. So that was the video guys. I hope you guys liked this video and I hope uh, your coding practice became a little bit better with this. Your AI knowledge became a little bit better with this. If it did help you in any way guys, then please do not forget to like this video and share the video with your friends. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions for me, please do write down in the comment section below. I would be happy to address them. And in the end, guys, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos. I'll see you guys in the next video, guys. Until then, take care and bye-bye.